Okay. Uh, again, the famous model that everyone is talking about it, and they can do lots of magic with GANs. Let's say generation, even we want to use it for uh, anom anomaly detection and all those things. So that's a new idea that you can use adversarial technique to be able to train a model. So instead of, so that's, that's, as I said, GAN was a cool thing because instead of having just the forward pass, defining a loss, and then doing backward and updating the, the, the weight, you are having another model, which will be like a judge, will look at your model, get the result, will punish it, or will reward it, and then this one will get better. And then by freezing this one, then you're saying, that, oh, you're not a good judge, because it, will, it can fool you. So it will, this one will get better. So it's like a, they're playing game, and they're getting better and better and better. So that was like a cool new idea, adding like a kind of like a say, game theory to the deep learning models. So, and then they said that even the Nash equilibrium for that was if this is always saying 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which means this computer can't tell the difference, and the generator can actually fool, fool the model, and that, I mean, can kind of make something super similar to the uh, actual data. So that was kind of like, a, on paper, the Nash equilibrium of the, the GAN, which, is, which comes from the game theory. But the thing is, the whole idea here was in stuff, see, the, the, no, I'm just thinking about it. It's like DNN was, Deep Neural Network was there to say that in stuff, me as a human do feature engineering, I can let the network to do that for me. I can add extra more layers, and those extra layers will learn some feature from the data, and then they will do feature engineering for me. So I can, in stuff, extracting edge from image, or I don't know, some feature from a speech, I can just has it as a raw input. And then maybe for a GAN, if you're saying that instead of me coming up with the loss function, I can let the model, a discriminator, to do that job for me. Instead of having, let's say, a distance, like a clear distance, cosine similarity, I can have a discriminator, which will be the judge and should be able to tell the difference. And be my own metrics of the generation, or for autoencoder or anything like that. So here, <clears throat> I try to implement a GAN based on all the things that we have seen before. It's like one of the simplest GAN that you can see. I try my best to reuse whatever is out there, uh, which you had for VAE or AE, and to make sure that it's not that complex. So that's why even the result won't be that Amazing, but it is the simplest model that we can just see and see how it's actually working. So the whole idea is like that. See, I have a generator. I made that AE model up there to be my generator. So it means the generator is a autoencoder. Condition of the input, it will just try to make the output, just autoencoder. In autoencoder, then I was defining a loss. The loss was different between the output and input. And here, instead of saying that, I'm just saying that, oh, wait, I have another model, which is discriminator. Remember I talked about it just you can have a normal neural network model with some layers, but which, which was my first uh, function, making just a normal neural network. I just use it, use that one as a discriminator. Then I compile it. So this is my judge from that moment, is a discriminator. The one which will tell the difference between the generated one from a generator and the real data. And so th then from that moment, I'm just saying that, okay, that's the image uh, user generator. That's a reconstructed one, output of the autoencoder. And then for the, for the, for to, to, to train the, the generator, I'm just saying that, okay, freeze the discriminator, pass the reconstructed one to the discriminator, and that's the output, which is either zero or one. And then I'm making the adversarial model, which given the Im image, I'm trying to kind of compute the result, which is based on the discriminator. I'm passing all of them as output, 
which is basically the generator, discriminator, and the combination of them. Here, I'm training them, train the GAN. For training the GAN, I'm just saying that if you have generator, discriminator, and adversarial one, and the data, you should be able to just train it. For number of epochs, you can just read it for number of batch. So it is like, is a number of batch you can define, which is like a, you can say, basket of sample that you're passing to the neural network. I'm calling it the generator and discriminator. I'm making the real one a fake one. And then I'm kind of, uh, you can train, train the adversarial model. And then and for given the actual data and, and then given the, the fake data, I'm trying to kind of learn the model. <clears throat> Basically, that is, that, that's the whole thing. <coughs> so as you can see here, training on the real data and training on the fake data. For fake data, the model should give me the zero and the other one should give me the one. I mean, that's a loss actually for it. So the, the only thing that I'm just, they can just train the model, that's the function for it. And then I'm just what put in the result of the model. I'm not talking, I'm, I'm not actually explaining it super in super detail because that's how GAN is working and then you can actually study how GAN is working in lots of places. I guess they might have even a workshop for it, you might know, but. There was a we had there for it. Good, good, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do we have lots of workshop for every single thing here? Uh, so that's why I don't want to go that much in detail, but I just want to use it as a, as a model. But to not just use it, I try to implement it as, as, as simple as possible, just by using a deep neural network, instead of using other convolutional or an LSTM one, just basically reusing all the function that they had to make a GAN. And here, I'm just gonna test it. I'm saying that, okay, you have seen MNIST, I have number of layers, and then train the GAN. Uh, you can you can start, you can you can run the model for yourself. Here, as you can see, that's my generator, which is basically that autoencoder, and then that's a discriminator. And you can see I have two of them because once I have this model, the image going here, and the output will be that one. For the real image, the model would be just that one, video generator part. So it's like because once I'm doing the whole two of them together once I'm just doing the discriminator. And that's how I'm playing with them to make sure that it's working. When I'm doing the discriminator, I'm trying to learn, make the discriminator better. Once I'm doing the other one, I'm freezing the discriminator, I'm just trying to make the generator better. That's how it's working. I mean, the concept is clear, how GAN is working. Two component, I'm making both of them better. They're making each other actually better. Question, confusion, lots of confusion. <laughs> but okay, I was just trying to make it to be simple as possible, but maybe I'm not doing that, but you can you can be the discriminator for me and telling me that So the, basically I'm the generator here <laughs> making lots of words. You are the discriminator here, you can say if it doesn't if it makes sense or not. Basically, GANs is exactly like that. So once you are doing that, based on your reaction, I'm getting better, I'm working on myself. And then, given that I'm getting better, you will get better as well, because you will be a better judge as well. Exactly that's how GANs work. Oh, I'm, okay, I'm trying to is make a, sure. <laughs> machine learning, an old, old term in machine learning for this called biconvex learning. So it's a class of machine learning algorithms, of which is probably one of them, but when you have a, and then you freeze A and do B, and then freeze B and do A, and by convex learning. So maybe that's a similar concept to that, but because, but I, at least the same technique of freezing is, is, is getting applied here, mm -hmm. but only once, just for this parameter one, but for the other one, we're just, because it's a real data, we're just reusing it. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, it's a combination of maybe multiple techniques, but that's, just, that's the cool thing about it, it's like, Without having any label, just by that technique, generating 
judging, generating judging is getting better and better. That's why it's kind of like a self-supervised technique as well. By slot is getting better. So, so the, the thing is, the generator, given an image, try to, is like, I'm reading a book, and then I'm going to describe the book to you. So the, it, it's not like I'm coming up with a, a story by myself. Is, is conditional. I'm reading a book, and whatever I'm saying should be related to the book. And then you are saying you because, and then you have all these things seen the book as well. So you do have access to the real data, and you can compare it with my generated one, generated version of it, and you can tell the difference. So that's how GAN is working. And here we can see that how generator will make up will make a good MNIST image. Just by see, but just by trying to coming up with different image, and just by these two technique, we'll see how it will get better and better. And you can see here that's the loss between these two. So this is the loss for uh, for the discriminator, and this is for the generator. As you can see, they are playing with each other. Once is this one getting lower, maybe the other one getting higher. So they are playing, and it, even if I make it to be even more complex, uh, you can see that they're kind of they can fight each other, and at the end. They, they maybe will get to point that the whole reconstruction will get lower actually it means the generator is getting better and better and better to be able to come up with an image which will be able to fool the discriminator so that the discriminator can say okay you are close to the actual image I'm, it is, it is getting harder for me to tell the difference <laughs> that's the whole idea and then if you test the reconstruction one and then you can say, give me an image for number seven. Uh, so it can be, so seven is, was not there. So it, as you can see, it is not good at all because it was not part of the data. But if I say maybe one, see, given one as a condition, the generator was able to make a new image super similar just because the discriminator was there punishing the generator to make it better and better and better. Why is it that no matter what number you put in, the discriminator output is still like sort of like five? Like it, it just could never tell at all? Uh, to be honest, okay, um, that's your exercise now, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, the best GAN is the one that discriminator will always point 0.5 and the generator loss will go to zero. It means the generator got that good that the image is super similar to real one, that this computer can't tell the difference anymore. Right, right. It's like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, I can't tell the difference. So it means the this computer is super high, super good. I mean, the, the, the generator is super good. But if generator was not that good, the this computer can still tell the difference. See, that's the idea. But the thing is, here, I'm kind of helping the generator as well. That's the thing that you can play with right now. You see, here, the thing that I didn't talk about it was I have another uh, input called alpha. Where is my alpha? Where are you? Maybe not anywhere. Here, R alpha. So that's a reconstruction alpha that you can actually change it if you want. What does it mean? It means I, instead of just for generator, usually if you have just a GAN, the loss for the GAN comes from discriminator. If this computer can tell the difference, I will use it as a loss to make myself better, because that's how punishment gets in here. But here, because we are using a conditional GAN, we are trying to reproduce the input as well, we have the, another loss as well, which is the distance between input and output. That's why it's my recon reconstruction loss. And the alpha here is saying that how much reconstruction loss should be part of your actual loss. 
So if I make it to be 0, it will be all based on discriminator. If we make it 1, it will be equal. No, it's like 0.5, which means mainly from discriminator, but look at the, disc look at the, 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 the construction one as well. So that's why generator got that good that discriminator couldn't tell the difference because it was getting help from uh, the reconstruction loss as well. So here, you can train it, you can test it, and, and you can, as you saw that you can have, I don't know, four, let's see how it will be four. And how about nine that we haven't seen before? Well, still not, okay, the nine got completely destroyed, almost. Yes. See, because th that's the same, because there, uh, for MNIST, because all those numbers are not that much different from each other, and still, all of them are in the center, they're, they're shaped, they, they, they have some, so the, 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 generator, the generator, given the condition of the nine, will have some idea about it. So it will do its best to, as a generator to be able to reproduce it again. Based on, it's like, even you have, if you haven't seen some, so it's like a transfer learning by itself, kind of. It's like you're just seeing different number and just want to apply it to different one. It won't be as good as, the, as, a, as a normal one. So it still is like blurry and, and the reconstruction loss is, is like 0.9. But I don't know, for something like maybe uh, two, let's see what is it. It's still bad, actually. But how about the reconstruction? Still same thing. So it, it was not that good here. So it means the thing I'm saying is like that. All those models that we tried, they were not that good for MNIST because MNIST is image. And if you just if you destroy the image by having it as an array, you will lose lots of information. And even if I make the GAN here to have more layers, I will make it better for sure. But just imagine that I learn to reproduce a number just based on super simple autoencoder and a discriminator. And then I can use this to a score to come up with maybe a score to find what is what layer, what is not. And for credit card, I want you to actually make a generator, make a GAN, uh, and then produce, try to produce a number and result. Funny thing here, see, uh, one of the things about GAN is uh, sometimes it's not stable, see? So it means here, it's just for generator. So it was getting better, getting to a point that this commuter was getting better, and then, so it, this is like a fight. Sometimes GAN is super hard to, to converge. That's why you have to, they are using lots of technique for GANs. How can you make sure that your GAN will converge? I mean, they're using, I don't know, batch normalization, they're using, I don't know, different activation function, they're using, or even for instance, of, they're using like Vazarian, I don't know, they're using different kind of technique to make sure that it will converge. But it won't happen all the time, and that's the issue. And that's why it's super fancy, super cool to use it, but you have to be careful. And you have to make all those hyperparameters in a way that it will converge. And then you can see the result as well, that how, how separatable are the model, and then you can see the result. Do the evaluation if you want, uh, based on it, and then see what is the best f score as your exercise now. Play with the GAN. That's exercise, last exercise. 